Hey, welcome. It's Pastor Jason here. I'm with Pastor Cliff, and we are excited, excited about all that's going on in our church, and we're excited about the new year. I wanted to bring Cliff in. Uh, many of you had the opportunity this past Sunday to hear Cliff preach, uh, but also to hear Cliff's passion and his heart for discipleship. As a church, we made a decision last year to put discipleship first. Uh, we call ourselves disciples. Uh, we call ourselves Christians, followers of Jesus, Christ-like. And yet we live so much like the world. And so we are trying as a church and, and, and we are pushing as pastors to, to reach out to our congregations, but also out into the world and to disciple people back into a relationship with Jesus to where they are discipling others. And so I want to talk to Cliff today about all that he spoke about Sunday, but also just so much more that's going on in his life. Because um, one of the things that uh, a lot of people are kind of questioning is, well, where'd Cliff come from? Um, and that's, that's kind of been my favorite uh, story uh, so far is because I love telling people about how we met um, because the first time Cliff and, Cliff and I ever met was actually um, at a baptism and 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 and, right. and Cliff yeah. was performing it. So that's right. um, and so it was my first Sunday in Athens, Texas, and the family said, "Would you come out this evening? We'd love to. We'd love to have you there. Uh, we didn't know you yet because I just got there." And so Cliff was uh, performing the baptism, and uh, I, I met I met this guy, and it was really really kind of interesting because we didn't know have any clue who each other were. Um, we didn't really exchange any contact information. We just knew each other's face, and then and then and then Cliff sh Cliff would show up again, or or we'd find each other over at the uh, what about kebabs that used to be open. That's right. Yeah, and I was like, sharing I know some, you, right? And sharing some Greek food passion. <laughs> it just kept happening. It was like God kept you know putting us together over and over again, um, and then all of a sudden we just started hanging out. We started we started becoming friends. Um, our family became friends. Um, our kids have grown up together. You know, I think about the fact that. Um, our oldest have been friends since they were four years old, which is just just absolutely crazy to think about. Yeah, um, and here wild. they are now. Yeah, and so uh, they've known each other since they were little kids, and and some of them were not even born yet, and were born there in Athens, and have now are friends. Um, and so uh, Cliff, Cliff and I have been friends for such a long time now, uh, and getting to do ministry together has been a whole new experience for us. Uh, I mean, we're a whole 17 days in. 17 days so far, so good. Can't complain. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. Good, good. Y'all heard that, right? No, okay, we've joy. got a video evidence, it's a so it's going well. Um, so, to Cliff, you you have a family that that, that came with you. Um, I do. Yeah, I do. and and uh, wonderful family. Just uh, looks very much uh, like mine. Um, uh, Cl Cliff has three girls, like Lots I of do. Lots girls. Um, all very the girls. similar in age. Mm -hmm. um, and you took them all out yesterday. I took Thank you so your girls much. and my girls yes, you did. all to Chick fil A. <laughs> yes. People always give me the weirdest looks like, are these all yours? And I'm like, yeah. Basically. They're all mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I just looked around the room and I'm going, where is it? I know it's in this room and you know what I'm looking for. It's a picture of Cliff and I. Um, maybe I give it to Josias and he can post it. But um, when we took the kids to Medieval Times that's and, right. and we got the package where you get a picture, and, and we didn't know if we could share the picture publicly because it was just you and I and six kids. Yep, just VIP up top right that's, here. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we went, had fun, took the kids to medieval times in Dallas. Um, but it was just the, the looks we got and everything because we just, you know, the kids love to do things together. We love to do things together yeah. um, and, and a lot of fun. Cliff, Cliff and I really became friends when we found out we both liked movies. That's true. Um, That's love true. to go see movies. Love to go go to the movie theater. Uh, we would go see the the worst B movie they ever made, and we'd go and enjoy it and eat some cheap, popcorn. Cheap late night action movies that our wives definitely don't want to see. I I definitely <laughs> missed the four dollar movie tickets in Athens, yes. Texas. I uh, mean that was yeah. awesome. Not a good seat uh, or a theater. You had the no, the but there's nobody there. It was stadium. just us. Yeah. I mean, there were maybe six people that's in the right, room, that's and right. so nothing to worry about. It was nothing to worry about. It was absolutely wonderful. Though that that was the theater, though, that when something was brand new, you don't go see it in there. You go to the big theater and you pay the money. So there was many mm -hmm. times we would jump in the car and, and drive or head over to Tyler. Uh, yep, had a good time. But uh, yeah, and so Cliff, last year, um, well, actually, I think for a few years, Cliff and I had always just been talking about how cool it'd be to do ministry together. And then when this all happened with resurrection, um, 
one of the things that I kept telling people is, you know, we started off with a, you know, a large amount of people, a huge church, and, and we were on bare bones, and we started with four people working at the church uh, at the very beginning and 310 people on the first day. Um, within two and a half months, we brought in a Spanish service, and we were still growing, and so we had over 500 people, and we're st and still continuing to grow, um, and then it just kept growing all year long, and so we, we, we've had to bring on staff, we've had to bring on people uh, to continue to serve those areas. Uh, we brought, brought, brought on Lori uh, to help with all of the finances and all the business of the church. We, we brought on uh, Kegel or Jason Kegel to, to help with our youth because April, who came on at the very beginning, was doing children, youth, families, seniors. All of it. Schools. <laughs> events i mean we'll just women's just, ministry i mean it was all, all of it right yeah. and so she she's been a saint and, and and she had worked so hard to make all this happen and then kegel's come in and he has worked so hard to make all of this happen and so uh we have all of these things that have been put in place all of these things that are going really well um, but there was just something really missing and what it what it was is the fact that we had something for our children we had something for our youth right we had we had some bible studies that were happening for our adults but what were we doing to actually grow up disciples in our church outside of those areas um, when you're looking at your adult you know bible studies and you've got one with maybe 87, another one with 30 or so, another one with 15 to 20, right? And you're looking through it all and you do the math, that's a third of our church. And so we had a huge amount uh, in the church that are not going to any type of discipleship, but they're showing up Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. And so you and I um, were talking, we won't say where, uh, maybe in a place in Mexico, we were talking and we were uh, surrounded by children. That's right. uh, I, I actually remember I saw the picture, six kids, in the pool, Jason and Cliff, don't know where the wives were, probably enjoying their vacation, and we were talking and we were going over what was going on in the church and just how uh, help was needed, uh, discipleship, and Cliff and I got to talking and I planted a small seed and it grew. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, meanwhile, in my own life, I mean, I had, uh, obviously grew up in the church, uh, born and raised out in West Texas, and uh, went to um, college out there in Lubbock. And Do you have a favorite, like, sports team or anything? Uh, you know, uh, Red Raiders all the way, a little bit. Uh, of course, it is a, uh, I'm a realist, so I know we're not maybe the greatest uh, football team, but man, we try hard. Um, and you know what? We got Patrick Mahomes, so booyah. There you go, um, right? But I mean, yeah, you think about so. all the state champ. I mean, the 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 national championships that A and M has played in too. You know, so I mean, uh, that's right. That's right. right. Like, I feel like we're on common ground. So. Yeah, we'll get there. This, One this, of these days. This is going to get me in some trouble, but it'll be um, fun. Yeah, <laughs> go basketball and baseball there you um, go. for right now. Um, anyway, uh, but yes. Yeah, so born and raised in, in uh, rest West Texas. And then moved out to East Texas to do ministry there in uh, Athens and was in youth ministry and then moved up to uh, really sort of a deaconship role of all the different volunteer hats that I was wearing of uh, running some security and building maintenance and yet doing vision and small groups and a lot of preaching through some preacher transitions that we had and yes, I, different I, things I, like that. And so, yes, yeah, well. some good adventures um, there. And so, uh, meanwhile, I feel like, yeah, God was just developing that uh, spirit of discipleship inside me and, uh, you know, giving me good opportunities to uh, sit down with some mentors in that area to um, purchase books and be reading a whole lot in that area of spirituality. And so, uh, so yeah, when you kind of approached me and planted that seed, it was like, well, I wondered why I was so passionate about this for a while now. And <laughs> all of a sudden you're God, you're going to give me an avenue to use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to look into this a little bit more serious. So. Amen. And so what I, what I found really, really uh, great about all this was then, um, I, I said, okay, well, if you're serious about this, I want you to talk to my buddy. And so I sent you over to Chap Temple. Um, for anybody right. who doesn't know, yeah. uh, Chap Temple uh, wrote the Doctrine and Disciplines for uh, the Global Methodist Church. So, guy knows it all. Or at least I think he does. Literally wrote the book on Literally it. Literally wrote right. the book. So, 
I, I gave I gave uh, Cliff uh, his number, and you called Chap, and all of us all of a sudden uh, you are signed up in classes. Um, you are turning in your uh, you know information to to be a uh, pastor in the Global Methodist Church. Um, you know we you are doing all of these things. You are going to class. You are learning more about uh, the Methodist, but also just a great time in seminary. Uh, but then you, you, you did the same thing I did, and I loved it. You, you, you called me one day, and you said, man, I love this John Wesley guy. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know, you know. Right? Like how much I like. And I'm like, I, I know, right? Like, he, he made a lot of mistakes in life, which if you mm-hmm. haven't learned all those things, you can look them up. That's uh, right. He made a lot of mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But I think that's the greatest part is that he continued to feel pulled and tugged. And so your story just talks about how you were pulled and tugged by God, and you were like, where am I going? What is happening? And that's the same thing with John Wesley. He feels that God is always while always chasing after us, always desiring a relationship with us, and God never gives up on us. And that's what I love about the grace that John Wesley speaks about is that we're never alone, that God is always offering us this grace, always offering us love, and there's never a time in our lives where we will not be forgiven by our God. Um, that's right. And so I love that. And so, Cliff, as we, as we got to uh, Sunday, this past Sunday, i got to tell you, um, the biggest compliment that that uh pastors get at the church that i that i I can give anybody is when i'm approached after church and told that there might be a replacement in my position um (laughs) and and they do it obviously in joking i hope but uh at the end of the day (laughs) i've always taken that as a huge compliment um because it just means that you spoke to them right Mm -hmm. uh god well god spoke to them through you and so this Sunday, you did a, a, a wonderful job uh, presenting a message of, of needed discipleship in our lives and, and how far we've gotten away from that. So I uh, wanted to kind of delve be into praised. that a little bit today. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you to memorize your chaos slide that you, that you had up there. Uh, but if you haven't had a chance to, to, to watch the sermon, uh, it's, it's, it's available uh, online and on our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Uh, but you can look at watch that sermon, and at the very beginning, Cliff just lines out exactly what the the hope is uh, for our discipleship this year. And uh, it was a long. We had to, I, I broke it into two slides because I said there's no way anybody's going to read it, and and then it'll just go away. But it was just this massive amount of information of all the hopes we have for our church in growth this year for disciples. And so I wanted to see if you could talk more about that chaos slide now that. You know it's gone, and, and uh, they, 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 you read it real fast and said you get all that. Um, the hope, of course, is not just to disciple people, right? It, there's there's also uh, a part where you eventually begin discipling others, right? And so, can you talk a little bit about more about the vision, like for the discipleship here at this church, but also, I mean, just discipleship and in, in, in its uh, at its core, because your sermon title, new new year. Right. Yeah. New season. New season. And the old discipleship. Old discipleship. So what does that mean? What is it? Like, let's talk about that. Yeah. So I think you touched on it a little bit by mentioning, you know, somebody saying, oh, well, looks like we found, you know, your replacement or somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, but as as joking as that is, that's one of the goals of Christianity, right, is, is for us as leaders, too, is we want to be replacing ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, it doesn't have to be just a Christian principle. CEOs of companies, they want to eventually be replacing themselves with somebody who's a really good leader that's going to take the company in the newest direction. And so we see that uh, in the church. You know, that's Jesus knew his time on this earth was just as brief as it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And so he had to find people that were going to carry that banner and, you know, carry the torch once he was gone. And so, uh, so yeah, he had to start training up leaders who were going to, in essence, replace him, even though he's Jesus. We never can live up to that and obviously can't replace him. But, uh, but yes, um, to have that as the ultimate goal of discipleship of, hey, follow I, I'm going to follow Jesus. You follow me, and let's let's learn what this is like, and let's follow Jesus together. And then eventually, we're going to get to a point where we're pretty comfortable. We're not arrived. We're n- we're never done, mm-hmm. but we're comfortable enough where you can kind of bring some other people along with you 
and then this person is going to bring people along with them, and so on and so forth, and then you start that multiplication process of discipleship. So, right, right. And so the focus of, of discipleship, right, uh, is is in your eyes, what would it be? What would be the the sheer focus? Like, because I feel like a lot of times when we get into areas like even worship, we know that worship is supposed to be our worship to God, but we so often hear things like, well. I like this and I like that. And so it's such an interesting concept to think that we're supposed to be coming to worship God and to give God glory, but it's about what we want. And I'm sure in discipleship, we're going to, we're going to see those same barriers that we have to cross over. And so, uh, what is the focus in discipleship as we're moving forward? Because, um, I think one of the things that I, I feel that, that gets so, uh, misconstrued and I have this wonderful mess, this wonderful, uh, anonymous Facebook post that I showed you that just drove me crazy this past week. Um, and so, and of course it was all about what am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I, it would look yes. like, it looked like a real estate shopping list, like for a house, but it yeah, was for a church. Absolutely. And so I'm sitting there going, if you want all of these things, right, then the focus is obviously not on Jesus. It's not on uh, coming together. It's not on worshiping God. It's on, I'm happy. I'm getting what I want. And so I feel like when you get into discipleship of others, uh, you're going to hit some, I, I know one of the, the uh, crossroads that we had to one time when we were implementing the small groups was eventually we tried to multiply a small group, right? We took one small group and we wanted to make two mm -hmm. because a small group had done what it was supposed to, supposed to do and it doubled in size. Yeah. And so it was no longer to, to viable. But the problem came is that everyone wanted to stay together, right? Mm -hmm. And so no one was focused on the fact that the, what the discipleship was actually supposed to do, it was like, we like our group of friends. And right. so, you know, as we go forward, I wanna make sure our focus is, everything we're doing is kind of on the same page. So I was curious, what's your main focus as we move forward in discipleship? Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's all about Jesus, right? And uh, I mean, in response to that post, I think both of us uh, said something along the lines of, when you find that perfect church, let us know, because we're going to have some questions. Right, um, right. Because we'd love to be the perfect church, too. And uh, if I remember correctly, there was like a laundry list of names of churches, apparently, that they had already tried out and crossed off their list. I mean, there were entire denominations. Uh, yes. I mean, not just names of churches. I mean, uh, you, that's when, right. Like, that's right. when you say Catholic church, you're like, well, those you know, 200,000 churches are out, you know, and you're, 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 you know, Methodist church. Well, those 30,000 churches are out, you know, I mean, it wasn't just a laundry list of three or four churches. They, they were uh, annihilating, you know, a hundred thousand churches just in, in there that they don't want to hear from. They don't want to visit. Um, and it was just such an interesting post because they pushed so hard on what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like that's where the world's pushing us these days. The Absolutely. World is, I mean, yeah. you look at any of the things going on, especially in the government, like, um, you know, I don't want to get into uh, the, the, the anger of all that with our politics, but it seems that everything is about making me happy. And if I'm not happy, then I get to be mad. Mm -hmm. And we see that in our, in our society, right? I mean, here we are hanging out in wonderful Katy, Texas, but, you know, don't, don't mess with certain things in Katy, Texas because somebody's going to get set right yeah um there's always going to be when there's change when there's anything um people are going to get upset because it's all about them and if they're unhappy if it's not if they don't like it then they complain and we've always found that if you get enough complainers eventually somebody's going to give in so. that's right that's right it's kind of that uh burger king christianity right of uh i want it my way and if not i'll just take my ball and i'll go home i'll move on mm -hmm. um um, but no, I think we uh, want a discipleship where we are raising up Christians who know, um, wow, I really, I need to be fed and I need to be led. But I also, in this being led, sometimes it's going to make me a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes in order to build my muscles, I have to lift heavy weights that, wow, that, that hurts and that's uncomfortable. Sometimes to grow our spirituality, we have to lift certain muscles where, man, we got to stretch a little bit and it doesn't always feel great, but we know it's going to be better for us in the long run. We know it's going to build us into people who, as Paul says, we want the mind and attitude of Christ Jesus, right? Right. right. And so we want that, uh, that humility and, um, just the awesomeness that Christ has, um, in a, 
in every single one of us. Yeah. And so, no, we can't always have it our way, um, but there are a lot of good growth possibilities there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I heard something in my head go, I want it my way. Anyway. Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> it's little boy bands. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, I want it that way. Right. But I mean, it's, I want it my way is just what I think of, but okay. So as, as, as we look and talk about discipleship, um, you know, I, I look at different things. Like I look at John Wesley and John Wesley really attempted this discipleship. Now, his approach was great, but also he, he got very frustrated when, when people did not actually follow uh, what he had put in place. And, of course, you know, we all get to that point, right? We said we worked, we worked so hard. We did everything we could. We got all these things. And then, you know, that everyone, oh, I want to do it this way, right? Change, change uh, and go over here. But one of the things he, he had is he had things like bands and class meetings. And these, these things had developed in the Methodist Church. Um, and and I'll, we'll get later on about one of the things that I think really destroyed these things. Um, it's not going to be a popular uh, opinion, so we'll get get there later. Um, but one of the things that people, uh, you know, the bands, the bands were really meant to be like sharing life together, right? Yeah. Right. And then class meetings were those those times to come together to share life, but also to uh, to grow together in discipleship, right? And of course, you have all these different things uh, happening. Um, so talk about those for a little bit, because I know there's going to be expectations and questions. So what are your what are your ideas of different types of discipleship groups? Um, we see small group leaders are meeting next week on Wednesday here at the church. Um, and then you're going to have on the 29th another meeting for all the discipleship team and anyone who's interested in helping with that or being a part of that. Uh, so what do those look like? What are some of the small group ideas that you have right now for, for the sure. church? Sure. Um, well, ideally, uh, we have several groups that are currently meeting. Um, I know that uh, many, many people are involved in uh, some of the Bible classes that are offered during the week. And our goal is to say, okay, that's great. And that's, uh, that's one way to do a small group is to have sort of a, like a mini sermon, if mm -hmm. you will, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. And so I think I want people to hear, like, if that is, if that is feeding you and meeting all of your spiritual needs, then okay, uh, that that's good. That's good, and I I want that to continue. And I, I I would never want to take that from you, but I also want to introduce that idea of more. And I feel like in life groups, you know, in larger class settings like that, you don't necessarily get an idea to say well, here's what's going on in my world. You know, I, I, I hear you reading John chapter 10, verse 10, and it, I, I hear your opinion on it, but what it means to me this week is I had a fight with my spouse. Like, how, how, do, I, how do I really apply what you were saying to me to that specific situation? And I think that's one of the unique opportunities that a life group and a smaller group of, you know, 10 or 12 people can say, let's take time and let's actually sew into, um, hey, you have, the, you, you have that concern. You guys, your husband and wife, you, you guys are having the, uh, a struggle right now in your marriage. Let's talk about that. What's going on? Tell us more. Um, that, that's an opportunity that you don't get. You definitely don't get that on a Sunday morning, right? We can't no. just stop and 400 people pause their daily schedule of uh, what we have to accomplish there on Sunday morning. But in a small group setting, you can. Um, in a small group setting, you really get to do life together. You get to experience um, people's kids and sometimes you want uh, those kids involved in the discussion sometimes you don't sometimes you welcome the distractions sometimes you're going to need to uh you know have somebody watching them to get stuff done right but uh you know the idea is that uh that you know those same kids they need other adults in their life that are going to show up and sew into them mm -hmm. sometimes my kids they may not be comfortable talking to me about X, Y, or Z, but hopefully they're, maybe they approach Amanda and they mm -hmm. say, Amanda, we see that, you know, you're a good cook. We'd love your advice on this recipe. When that changes to, we see that you're a Christian and you're a baptized believer. We want your opinion on this thing that happened at school that mm. I can't tell my parents. And so other adults in my kid's life is huge. Cause again, I want them talking. 
Right. And I want them to be poured into and I want them to be I want them to be fed, but sometimes they may not want that from their dad. They may want that from somebody else. And so and it may take a different approach sometimes mm -hmm. with every single person. So I think that's an opportunity that small groups give us uh, and small groups, again, being more of a 10 or 12, um, you know, five or six couples in a group versus actually having some of those larger Bible classes. So again, if that's meeting your needs, then awesome. But I would challenge you to uh, explore more and go deeper. And so I want uh, some of our small groups to be um, maybe men only, women only. Uh, we already have Kegel, who's doing an awesome job having our youth group have age-specific junior high, high school. Um, April is starting up a uh, women's one with mm -hmm. some fighting words, um, which uh, is good. It's a good Christian discipleship book. And again, sometimes it's gonna be a book study. Sometimes it's gonna be a topic study. I've seen small groups uh, across the spectrum. Sometimes it's, hey, I enjoy doing yoga. You want to do yoga together? Or sometimes it's, man, I'm really busy. My schedule is chocked full. I really only have Tuesday night from 6 to 8, and then I kind of got to call it a day. Well, Tuesday night from 6 to 8, let's have a small group. Let's talk a little bit about Jesus during that time right, right. or talk about something that's going on in your life during that time. And so, uh, or maybe some of them are region specific. Maybe some members of this church are saying, well, I live here in, you know, I, I know I live in, or my church is here in Katy. They're at the Katy High School and I can make it on Sunday mornings, but it's kind of a challenge to get there. It's about a 30 or 40 minute drive. So... Mm, I can't necessarily make it often, mm -hmm. um, but maybe they, you know, 30 or 40 minutes away, there's a small group that's going to start meeting right there in their neighborhood. And so that group of 10 or 12 believers can get together there and say, hey, let's, ha you know, Jason talked about this on Sunday morning. Let's talk about it right now. Yeah. And so maybe it's just a continuation of what's been said on a Sunday. So. Good, good. So... Um, one of the things that you know uh, that uh, I did tell people as like as you were coming is that you've you've done this before you know in different settings you know um, you've done it in an up and coming growing church and and you've also done it in a church that's been established for a long time and was very set in their ways um, <laughs> yes. you know and uh, you know uh, I'm sorry it, there's no other way to describe you know uh, that's church right. of Christ right I mean that's the, the way. Uh, it is, and that's 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 okay. We 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 love all those these denominations, you know, because every one of them uh, allows us to express our belief in God uh, differently. Um, and my joke always has been that I'm going to get to heaven and and be you know wrong, and and that's my hope, right? Is I'm wrong about so many things, uh, but you know we we go off of what we we can read, what we can see, and what we can experience with God and the traditions that have carried us all the way through. So there's always change. Right, mm -hmm. change, change. There's a lot of change right now, um, oh, especially yeah. in our church, uh, where you're talking about we're a year in and we're still building it, right? And so uh, right. we celebrated a week and a half ago our uh, one year anniversary uh, on January 7th. January 8th was the actual, you know, had been a year, so 365 days was the seventh. Man, it was just wild to think uh, a whole year ago we we were sitting in my in my house uh, in the officing and all of that. And then we got this office, and, and it's wonderful. Uh, I don't complain about this office because, you know, I get to just look out, and there's City Hall uh, right there, uh, right outside the window. I can see all the traffic. I can hear all the honking when people are mad at each other, you know, out here. Um, I can hear the anger, you know, when the light changes and others don't or things don't go the way people <laughs> want. I get to listen to it. Uh, I have a, a wonderful air conditioner over here that's six feet away from my window on another building that just loves to rattle in the summer. Um, but at the same time, I absolutely love love being in the middle of the city. Um, but being in the middle of the city, you know, you also learn that there are things, like I said earlier, where you just don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. You just don't mess with it. I mean, that, that, that tree has been there forever or that school or anything. And so there's always things you do and don't mess with, right? And so, but there's also going to be obstacles. And then what I'm trying to ask is what are going to be the obstacles that you see in starting these groups, but also continuing these groups, um, because you know you're going to have people that say, "Well, I don't need all that. I just go Sunday mornings." Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I would 
definitely challenge everyone to try something. It's like when I encourage my five-year-old to try a new type of food. Well, you got to try new things because they might taste good. That's mm -hmm. what Daniel Tiger says. Oh, um, so watch uh, a lot of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I think Bluey probably says the same thing. So yes, um, I, I would encourage people to try it out um, because again, I do. You you see this in Scripture, Jesus did speak to the masses. He had his Sunday morning events, if you will, where he's speaking to several thousand people, uh, maybe times when he's speaking to several hundred. But at, in the end, he's spending the bulk of his time around him and his 12 disciples. And that's where what we get a lot of the scripture is his interactions, not just with the people, but his talking to the disciples after all of that big picture ministry is done. And so I think there's just so much value in trying to duplicate that and saying, you know, what can we learn from each other in a smaller setting where we can really ask questions and we can really process mm. um, that information together. And so again, my hope is it, it, life groups can, or you know, small groups can be about anything. They can be about something, a topic that you're really passionate about. They can be about your marriage. They can be about raising kids. We all know the drama that kids can bring and the uh, trials and tribulations that that comes with. And so, uh, so yeah, maybe it's a, a parenting small group that you mm. want to be a part of. Um, I know our latest one that we did um, before I came here was, uh, it was called Messy Fellowship. And so the idea is, it was, uh, the book we did was Habits of the Household. Mm. And so it was trying to develop these different patterns and rhythms of your household from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. And so this is just about healthy things that you do to start help raise your kids better. And so very uh, good, but the idea of calling it Messy Fellowship instead of the book title was we're not expecting, you know, we were moving at the time down here and yet we were hosting small group at the same time. So I wanted people to know like, hey, we're going to bring food and kids are going to be involved and that's going to be messy altogether. Mm -hmm. I got half my house in boxes. I got, <laughs> uh, you know, we might have a showing come and uh, walk through our house at the same time we're leaving small group. They can jump right in and uh, continue their tour or talk about Jesus with us if they want to. But uh, but yeah, I just wanted people to know like small group doesn't have to be uh, fancy and you don't have to set out your lace doilies or your, you know, put on your white gloves and uh, clean your house and do all this stuff. It's really just about getting together and um, being with Jesus mm. and being with one another. And if you're not comfortable doing that in your own home, then join one in somebody else's home and try it out for a little bit and see how they do things. If you're not comfortable hosting one at your house, but you really love Starbucks or one of the local coffee shops, by all means, have it in a coffee shop. <laughs> if you want to have it in a bar, have it in a bar, you know, like I'm, I'm telling you, we got a lot of options. We got a lot of choices. We got a lot of restaurants around here. Yeah. There's plenty of opportunity to not only use those conversations for small group, but also maybe as an outreach opportunity to tell people more about Resurrection Church. Nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. Very good. Yeah, I think I think one of the hard parts always is just going to be, um, what is this going to offer me? What mm, is this going to yeah. give me? What is this going to do, right? And and I think for me the hardest part has always been um, not what is it going to do for me, but what is it going to do for others, right? What is it going to do for Christ, right? Like what, what, at the end of the day, I am transformed through God's mercies and graces that are moving in my life. That are going, you know, as I look into the scriptures, as I look into the people's lives, as we interact together, you know, we are experiencing God through so many things, and I am naturally changed, just just by proxy, right, by being around it, and so when we, I, I think one of the biggest dangers we get in as Christians, and I'm going to bring up one of your friends, but and well, this will be kind of our closing as we talk about this, but um, it was an interesting interaction in Athens, Texas. Okay, I was with our good friend. Uh, he's a Baptist pastor. His name's Eric Graham. And Eric and I are just talking. We're just chit-chatting, um, and we are we are uh, now going about to go out on the field. The college uh, football team just got finished. Um, you know, we all 
hosted and, and took care of half the team, right? I mean, right. goodness, I can't even tell you how many linemen came over to eat at my house, you know? And of course, luckily, like you mentioned earlier, Amanda can cook, and so she took care of them. Um, but it was, you know, it was a massive, absorbent amount of food, right? Like that we had, like, that we had to produce for these kids. Um, and so we, we had all of these things happening. So anyway, we're sitting there, Eric and I, and we are just talking. And, and one of the things we're talking about, and, and it's kind of funny, is we're just, we're talking about people not coming to church, right? We, we, we are talking about something beyond that, in my opinion, is we're talking about small groups. We're talking about people coming in discipleship, people diving into the Word. And we were talking about how we could not even get people into church, right? Um, and so, and, and I think one of the things that have really happened over the past 15, 20 years is that all of the responsibility has been taken off of the church members, right? To the point where the pastor, the staff, right? They are now not only there to help keep the church going, running the church, um, coming up with all of the sermon series, ideas, opportunities to serve and opportunities to grow, right? And discipleship, but also they're in charge of witness. They're in charge of outreach. The pastor is now in charge, is the only sole person in charge of bringing new people into the church. No one else has that responsibility. It, mm -hmm. it, and we've grown into this where the staff is doing everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there with Eric and we're talking about these things and we're talking about how people don't show up to church and how you know, when you're not showing up to church, when you're not putting that as a priority, um, in my opinion, you're not living a Christian life because you're not growing in Christ. The priorities are missing, right? If you are willing to miss time worshiping God, in my personal opinion, this is all happening, and we didn't realize what was about, what, what was about to unfold when I said these things, but I was sitting there going, if you're not willing to put aside time to worship God, but you will not miss one hour of work in a 40 hour work week. Where is your priority? And the funny thing, the interesting thing I, I think about is the rich man walking up to Jesus and, and saying, I wanna follow you. And Jesus says, yeah, well go sell everything you have and follow and give it to the poor and then follow me. And I love thinking about that because it's a ridiculous, right? Like you've talked about, you talked about this, right? It's a ridiculous statement, right? Because none of us are going to go, oh, I'm going to sell everything and go. But at the same time, what is happening? And so as I'm talking to Eric about this and saying that people do not put Jesus first, they're not invested in their, their personal growth with Christ, and they will put anything, especially their job, anything else before it, right? We will do this before we come to church. We will, we, I mean, there are so many things like sports, right, on the weekends, right? The re, why are sports on Sundays? I can tell you right now, and I mean, this, this, this is an actual conversation happening on the side of the field. And I immediately get cut off. Because in my opinion, you're missing, if you're, go, if you're picking sport, the reason sports exist on Sundays is because enough parents have allowed it to happen. If enough parents would sit down and say, my kid is not going to sports on Sundays because Sunday morning is holy and it is our time for our personal belief that the God of all the universe, the God that we believe is all eternal, the God I'm going to spend all eternity with deserves one hour a week at least of my time. And this woman turns around and starts screaming at us about how she has this wonderful relationship with God that she doesn't share with anybody else. It was very obvious in the way we talked and the way she was talking to us and the anger that was coming from her, that she had not gone to church, but she has church in her home every Sunday morning by herself. And I calmly, calmly, as best as I calmly could, I think we know how calm I can be in a situation <laughs> like that. I just looked at her and I said, I am sorry that you think that Christianity is on your own. And, and, and she just kind of paused and she looked and I said, Jesus never intended for this to be alone. Jesus had 12 people following him. Jesus went into the masses. Yeah, every now and then he would retreat away to be with God. But then he would always, always come back and be with the people. He would come back and be with a small group. He didn't live it alone. If we're modeling a life like Christ and we're getting into discipleship, how important is it to make that the priority in your life? And, 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 and what does it look like in, in what you've seen for people who have gone through these and actually shown up and put discipleship first in their lives? Uh, what kind of changes you might have seen in their life uh, in, in doing so? 
yeah um wow that's that's a good question um yeah i think uh you know as again the really the path uh the holy spirit has led me on the past probably two three years um talking about uh things like uh going to a counselor and um talking about uh neuroscience and the way that our brains are connected uh, it's interesting to hear that even scientists are now realizing the idea of saying like an individual person is almost foolishness because I'm so like I'm so connected to you in this interview that, you know, when I smile I'm, or, you know, when I smile, you know that you've said something good or when I nod, you know, it, everywhere we go. Or we, when you roll we, your eyes. Yeah. We're, yeah. When I roll my eyes, you know, somebody is frustrated <laughs> or upset. Uh, so, so everywhere we go, we, we are interacting with other human beings. And so this idea that it's individual, but then it goes in even layers deeper where you're connected not only to the way that your brain works, but you're also influenced by how your parents raised you mm-hmm. and, the, and the attitudes towards Christ that they had. And not only that, but your family legacy and some of the not only the triumphs but also the trauma that your family has experienced some of those as jesus says er, the bible teaches can last third and fourth generation um we i think we're starting to realize more and more as people like the idea of me just as an individual it's it's kind of foolishness Mm -hmm. because i'm just so influenced by everything around me i'm influenced by my spouse by my upbringing by my family's history by all of my experiences and so uh the idea is that i mean we need each other (laughs) at the end of the day uh it it's hard to do life jesus knew uh jesus was longing in the garden of gethsemane he knew the trauma that lay before him and he was longing for that companionship to a point where he took his three closest ones even deeper into gethsemane with him and still you know they end up falling asleep on him multiple times um but he wanted that connection that proximity to other people um and that's what we need as small groups. We we can't do life alone. It's just impossible. And so um, really these, you know, COVID planted seeds of trauma and fear into every single person saying maybe it's not safe to be out there. Um, we, we've got to kind of get over some of that and say, you know what, it's actually not, it's a lot more dangerous to be alone. It's a lot more dangerous to try to do it by yourself yes. than it is to, to try and uh, invite somebody over to your house. <laughs> because you know what? At the end of the day, everybody's got laundry. Everybody's got dishes. Everybody's got stuff and chores that pile up. Mm. But we need our connection to Jesus. And so whatever your passion is, whether that's woodworking or football, well, great. Let's start a small group about it work Jesus into it somehow, meet with a smaller group of people who are also passionate about that, and let's figure out how we can bring something to the table that's going to take that relationship, not just at the surface, but actually deeper into discipleship. Amen. Amen. And I think that, you know, the model is so interesting because one of the things as we're closing, you know, uh, this this time together, um, as I think about, is our youth and our children's programs. And one of the big pushes last year in our church was, hey, Jason, we need to have a children's and a youth director to disciple our children, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And so what what happens then? Okay, so your kids start showing up and and they they start having fun, right? They start enjoying themselves. They start enjoying the people around them. And so they start coming more and they start asking the parents to come. Uh, to the point where you know you even see sometimes like that your parents drop off the kid the kid is the and this happened you know to to many of us right we we showed up we started going and then the parents started coming and they started following um and that that's such a huge thing uh, that a lot of people think is going to happen but in today's world it, it really has changed to where if you can get the child in, you may never see the parents mm. right and if you can get the parents in you know you will definitely see the child um, and so, you know, we, we are pushing for that discipleship because we want to reach the whole family. We don't just want to reach the youth. We don't just want to reach the kids. 
they love coming and they'll come back. But when you can get the parents, like you said earlier, uh, where they're coming and they're teaching their child the importance of showing up, um, you know, when you look at the generations between 20 and 40 year olds, um, this is the last last thing that's on their mind. They're not thinking about going to church. Many of them are not thinking about showing up. Many of them are not thinking about coming. And so putting this first, I feel that we are really pushing on the fact that it is important that you are present, right, with other people who care about you, who love you, and want to see you succeed, not just in the world, but in a relationship with God. And I'm so excited about that. And I'm excited you're here to help Absolutely, us in that. absolutely. Again, we can only... On a Sunday morning, you can only talk to a certain number of people. I can only talk to a certain number of people. So we've got to figure out ways to multiply ourselves. Small groups are a great way to do that. Right. For people to have somebody to pour into their life and say, here's some great advice, here's some great wisdom, or, man, I don't have this all figured out either. Let's, let's take this book and let's learn about it together. Even that passion and that heart, that's what we're looking for. We want yeah. people who are ready to grow deeper and man we need that amen well thank you well hey i'm excited uh i can't wait this sunday is going to be great uh we are going to continue to move on the holiness of god it's going to be our new sermon series uh talking about all that god uh, offers us all that god is doing um and just the relationship that's openly available for us through jesus christ and then of course uh we will move this into Lent because Lent starts so early. I don't know if y'all knew that. Lent starts so early this year. Uh, Lent is going to be early, early February. Actually, it's it, Ash Wednesday is is a very unfortunate day. Um, it, it's and and uh, I've even gotten some questions. You know, what are you going to do on Ash Wednesday? Because it's on Valentine's Day, and I said, well, Ash Wednesday was first. So um, we're gonna we're always going to do Ash Wednesday first. Uh, Valentine's Day, you know. I see people who, you know, they want to watch a football game, but they watch it the next day because they have to work. So, you know, Valentine's Day can be Thursday instead of Wednesday. It doesn't have to be on that day. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. You do Valentine's Day on Thursday instead of Wednesday, you can go get the flowers on Thursday, and they're 50% off. So, I mean, everybody wins, right? right. Jesus or wins and your spouse. So. Score some bonus points and have Valentine's Day the weekend before. There you go. There you go. S- big surprise. Yeah, they wouldn't see it come. Well, they That's might right. if they saw this. But Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we gave it away. But, uh, you know, uh, prioritizing the things that are important in life and, and making sure that you can fit them all in. Um, it's, you know, it's so important to make sure that you're in church. You know, one of the things our family tries to do is we try to go to church on our days off as well. So when, you know, if we're not worshiping at Resurrection, we're worshiping somewhere else. And, and so making sure that, you know, prior priorities are, are right. Priorities are set to where, uh, you know, God is always taking that priority. And, and yet it doesn't mean we can't have fun. It doesn't mean our kids can't be in sports. Um, it just means that we stand up for the things that are more important and we don't let the world dictate to us what we're supposed to do and and I can't wait to see all that's going to happen here at the church all that's going to happen through uh, your ministry uh, not just not just uh, in, in, in resurrection but just your ministry throughout throughout your life is going to be absolutely wonderful mm-hmm. I'm excited about all that God's doing uh, through the McGraw family mm-hmm. uh, and, and just very thankful for that so thank you yes. for letting me ask you a few questions today thankful to be a part of it absolutely and things. friends I hope to see you on Sunday cannot wait cannot wait for all 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 that's going to happen in 2024 uh, but we'll see you Sunday as we celebrate as we start a new series together and uh, as I, I promise, 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 um, we will not have a, 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 a sermon that's just going to be sure, you know, that, that speaks for two hours to every single person. Um, we will have a sermon uh, that, that, that fits into our time together, uh, and we will be out because uh, we, all, we have a wonderful opportunity at our church. We have a great Spanish service afterwards. So uh, if you have Spanish friends, Spanish-speaking friends, uh, friends who are looking for a church or just just looking for a place that cares about them. Uh, Pastor Daniel is great, great as well. And uh, I just want to encourage you uh, to, to encourage your friends uh, because we do have a lot of people in our community these days where English is not their first language. Uh, and so we actually do a, the best we can here to disciple not just those in English, but also in Spanish. And who knows, maybe down the road we'll have another uh, language that we can offer uh, here at the church, but uh, it's just been an absolute glory, uh, just, just, just uh, glory of God, glory to God and all that's been going on. So I'm just so thankful. So Absolutely. y'all have a wonderful week. Cliff and I are excited to uh, see you on Sunday yeah. and uh, we'll be back next week for some more. Make sure you catch the uh, leaders meeting, small group leaders meeting. That's right. On the 20, 
24th is going to be small group leaders. That's right, 24th. And who are you uh, looking for there? Go up ahead and here. give us a description. Uh, so we have the acronym of a host, and so we're looking for people with uh, a heart for people, if you have a heart for people. Uh, we want uh, you to be able to open your home or an alternative location, like I mentioned, coffee shop, restaurant, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, we want you to be able to talk about things, to have conversation, uh, and really that's that's what we're looking for is invite, invite somebody in, you have a heart for somebody, have a conversation with them, uh, that's what we want people to do. All right, so. all right. So you're looking for people who want to be small group leaders. That's right. Or interested in it. Wonderful. Yes. And then, and then on the on the Monday after, on the 29th, we have a discipleship team that's meeting. But you also said if someone feels that that that's something on their heart uh, that they would be interested in, um, that they could come maybe give it a shot. And we'll yeah, see, I want to have, have a conversation it. with them if they're really interested in discipleship. Uh, not if you're just curious as to what we're doing we'll let you know what we're doing you'll <laughs> you'll hopefully see the signs of it real soon um, but no if you're interested in being a part of the discipleship team you think you would have um, some good things to offer um, and want to come hear more about it then I'd love to have a conversation with them so that's kind of the heart of these first two meetings learn more about small groups learn more about kind of the discipleship process that we're going to be going through and uh, come and be a part of it Wonderful, so. wonderful. Well, they'll have a wonderful week. God bless you all. We'll see you Sunday.